So, uh, welcome back, everybody. I trust everybody's brought uh, a beverage or a coffee or what have you that they need. Um, we're going to start off this next batch of things with the uh, brand new uh, 8S, 8S software prize. Um, so this year, the 8S Program Organizing Committee has instituted a new software prize. The prize will be awarded every year at 8S for our an outstanding contribution to astronomical software. And the winner of this year's prize is William Pence for his work on CFITS.io. CFITS.io is a library of server teams, which I'm sure, uh, doesn't really need an introduction, but anyway, here we are, for reading and writing FITS files, which are using con countless astronomical software packages over time. Provides a de facto reference implementation of the FITS standard in addition to supporting common extensions used by the astronomical community. CFITS.io has moved to a robust portable, providing a stable code base for numerous projects across many operating systems and development languages. This award is presented in recognition of the outstanding contribution of CFITS.io to the astronomical software community for Bill's efforts and needed projects since inception. On a personal note, I'd just like to say I use FITS.io every day, sometimes millions of times a day. It always works. It always works fast. And if it doesn't work, it's because something's wrong with the data. So I am now going to hand bill the uh, the actual physical prize here by this. And bill you it's it's coming here it is <laughs> is that tight fit or the usb port uh and oh. so um you, are you just going to play the applause track because unfortunately we're still muted But uh, Bill, if you would like to say a few words about uh, about FITS.io, uh, take it away. All right. Well, thank you very much. I'm very pleased to be here. Um, I just wanted to show everybody this neat prize, which is a uh, recycled computer hard disk drive. And the uh, platter has been engraved with the words ADAS Software Prize 2020. And it's certainly a fitting prize for this award because my software was really geared to accessing files on devices just like this. The only problem I have is I'm not sure how many gigabytes I can store on this thing yet. But seriously, um, I'm truly honored and grateful to uh, receive this first award for the ADAS Software Prize. Um, it's especially meaningful to me because it comes from my own peers in the software development community, many of whom I have known and worked with for over 40 years. I would have to say, in all honesty, that I think this award to CFITS-IO is actually a very inspired choice by the ADAS because the ADAS meetings and participants were, are directly responsible for many of the innovative features in the software that have made it so useful. I had the pleasure to attend the first 23 ADAS meeting from 1991 to 2013. And those years coincided with the time that I was uh, actively developing CFITS.io. So at every meeting, I would come and talk to people about progress, issues I was having, and I would always return home with several pages of notes about ideas and suggestions, as well as a few complaints about CFITS.io. Uh, but more than that, these meetings led to active collaboration with many people uh, who contributed their own time to write and donate actual working code that is now distributed as part of the package. So I wanted to take this opportunity to briefly outline the history of CFITS.io and highlight just a few of the major contributions that others have made. Then I'll end with a few lessons learned of what I think I've learned about producing successful software. Um, just briefly, for those of you who are not familiar with CFITS.io, it's basically a library of subroutines that allow C and Fortran application programmers read and write FITS files, and it hides most of the internal complexity from the user. Um, 
but it's really much more than that. It, it, it has very complex internal computation uh, functions, which uh, allow you to um, make really invoke, which can be invoked at high levels without having to write much C or Fortran code at all. I guess if I was asked what is, uh, what is the main benefit of CFITSIO, it, it has been to make FITS files more accessible to the average programmer. In fact, when I wrote it, few people knew how to write FITS files. Um, yeah, a FITS image and a few keywords was not difficult to create, but FITS binary tables um, were a whole nother kettle of fish, as we would say. Um, CFITSIO, CFITSIO made it possible to, for almost anyone, to write FITS files rather quickly. And maybe one of the uh, benefits to that was it uh, made programmers uh, less likely, less inclined to invent their use, their own binary format or to do something different. And it may have helped solidify FITS as the standard format used in astronomy. It's hard to believe that the origin of CFITSIO goes back 34 years to 1986 when I bought a DEC Rainbow microcomputer as its arrival to the IBM PC. And it came with a Fortran compiler and I could run the same data analysis programs at home as I would run on the VAX machines at the Space Telescope Institute. And I would transfer data back and forth on these massive five inch floppy disks and so to read and write the data files on each machine, I wrote a small library of data access routines. And I didn't know anything about FITS at the time, but designing that data IO library provided valuable experience when it did come to writing it in a few years. In 1990, I joined a new project called the HIASARC at the uh, Goddard Space Flight Center, NASA. Uh, the HESARC had two main mission goals. One was to build a public data archive for the data from NASA's X-ray and gamma ray space mission. And it was already clear then that we would archive the data, data in FITS format. And the second main mission was uh, for the HESARC was to develop a software data analysis system for calibrating and analyzing those FITS files. We considered adopting one of the existing widely used systems, such as IRAP or SDS-DAS or MIDAS. Um, but one of the drawbacks to all of them was you needed to first import FITS file into the proprietary internal format that that analysis system would use. Um, and likewise, any data products you made would have to be exported back to FITS format being distributed. So after more discussion and debate, the HIASARC decided to make its own new data analysis system, which used FITS as the working data analysis format. And this had the advantage that our software, which we called F-Tools, which stands for FITS tools, um, it could directly read the FITS data in the archive via FTP or HTTP access and eliminated that import and exporting step. So in a nutshell, that's how I ended up being volunteered to write the data access library, which I wrote in Fortran. And that was used by the HESAR for its all of its analysis packages. Uh, this initial version didn't take that long to write and it's quite basic, nothing very revolutionary about it. And it certainly was not prize worthy at that point. I'll just mention one other significant event in the development history, and that occurred in December 1995, when the US government shut down for three weeks because the politicians couldn't uh, agree on a budget. Uh, NASA and HESARC were shut down, so I suddenly had a lot of spare time on my hands. So I decided teach myself how to program in C and started writing the C language version of the FITS library. 
that turned out to be quite fortuitous because many of the enhancements that were made later were much easier to implement in C rather than Fortran. So as I've mentioned over the years, I've received literally hundreds of suggestions for improving the, the library. Many were a direct result of the context I made at the ADAS meetings. I'll just mention a few of them here with apologies, but ones I've had to leave out. And in all these cases, pardon? Four minutes. Okay. So in all these cases, I have I probably wouldn't have thought of doing it myself, and um, it would have been maybe beyond my capability in any case. So I'll just mention it here. Um, one is some lexical parsing algorithms that do on-the-fly filtering of fits tables. It pre-compiles the expression in a way that can be rapidly evaluated. Uh, another one is the CFITS.io iterator function, which can rapidly stream through a table and select uh, rows that are of interest. So I highly recommend that if you are performing, doing computationally intensive operations on large tables. And just the last one I'll mention is one of the biggest, which was the image and table compression methods that were developed in collaboration with Rick White, Rob Seaman, and Doug Toady. And these have now been incorporated into the FIT standard itself. Uh, for other contributions, I'll refer you to the acknowledgement section of the CFITS.io user's guide, and it lists more than 80 people. Um, just the remaining couple minutes, I'll just randomly throw out a few things I've learned over the years that makes good software. Uh, one is that truly new and innovative software usually comes from an individual or at most a small group um, who are thinking outside the box. They don't come usually from big projects with formal design and review process. So this means I think programmers should always be allowed to have time to pursue some interesting new idea, even if it doesn't seem like it's immediately relevant to the project at hand. Uh, one, another thing I've learned from experience is worry about the corner cases. If it works 99% of the time, you still need to fix that other 1%. Somebody's always going to wander in that corner, and it's harder to fix later than if you do it right now. Uh, software distribution must be easy and painless for users. Ideally, it should be free and not require any registration or a lot of contact information. And the software should come with a standard software license with few restrictions. Unfortunately, CFIS.io is not a very good example of this because the NASA lawyers insisted on drafting unique wording for the CFIS IO license. Finally, in closing, I'll just you know, thank the people again. And I think this software award and others like it are really important and are an excellent way to recognize and promote the careers of software developers. Scientists can rely on their publication record as a means of winning job promotions. Programmers don't have this course, so awards like this can be very significant for their career advancement. And I'll note that this is especially important for the younger or mid-level indiv individuals. So I certainly hope the ADAS will continue awarding this prize in future years. And I'd also suggest that more organizations and institutions should consider establishing a similar sort of software award to recognize outstanding software achievements within their ranks. So thank you very much. Um, well, thank you very much, Bill. That was excellent. Uh, and thank you for CFITS I know in general. Um, I'm looking at the, we don't have a lot of time for questions, but I'm just looking at the, um, looks like uh, there aren't, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> One question. I was curious to see what the reasons might be for their naming. So it writes uh, Paul Barrett. Uh, 
I guess it's just Fitz.io. Originally, it was Fitz.io. It was written in Fortran. And it's pretty obvious, Fitz.io library. And when I wrote the C version, I had to distinguish it from the original. So I just put the C on the front. And eventually, the Fortran version was retired. And now there are wrappers on top of the C programs that Fortran uh, programmers could follow. And then one, uh, uh, sorry, advice for current data formats debates? Um, this is not perfect. I certainly know that. But the, the fact that it is such a common data language among the community, I think, is very important. And it would be uh, hard to replicate with any new format. And then... Uh, Regarding Thomas rates, regarding CFTA, what is your biggest regret? That I didn't make a dime off of it. Um, <laughs> actually, I was thinking I should put in a uh, little time bomb, so in a few years it'll encrypt all the FITS files, and uh, I'll fund my retirement by. Uh, requiring you send uh, Bitcoin to uh, a certain address. So, but realistically, I don't know. It's just been a fun thing. And uh, I think uh, it wasn't, it certainly couldn't be planned. And uh, so it's just, uh, it's, it formed the basis of my career, actually. Well, thank you very much, Bill. Uh, it's been a pleasure hearing about this. Uh, and, uh, and again, yes, thank you.